Shalom. This week's Sedra is Sedra Spiracious. The world we live in and the people who inhabit it are becoming increasingly dependent on technology. In the words of John, Dr. John Grohal, a psychologist and expert in online mental health, as a society, we are embracing technology without fully understanding the long-term ramifications of this decision. Many solutions to our problems are sought out through technology first, before we look to other possibilities. This isn't a challenge first faced by our generation. Our Torah portion ends with the birth of Noah. God recorded when Lemech, Noah's father, had lived 182 years, he begot a son, and he named him Noah, saying, this one will provide us relief from our work and from the toil of our hands, out of the very soil which God placed under a curse. Lemach was referring to the curse placed on Adam to work the soil. Since the curse, the people had been suffering, and they looked at Noah as their solution. What could Noah do to provide relief to mankind? In his commentary to this verse, Rashi wrote that the people hoped that Noah would ease the toil of our hands. Rashi explained that until Noah came, people had no agricultural instruments, and Noah invented instruments for them. The earth had brought forth thorns and thistles when they sowed wheat because of the curse imposed, uh, imposed upon Adam. In the days of Noah, however, his inventions caused this trouble to stop. <clears throat> Noah, the inventor of his day, provided relief from the challenges of primitive agriculture with the invention of, ad of advanced farming tools. The Sforno, an early commentator, rejected Rashi's interpretation and instead wrote the following. Lemach, Noah's father, prayed that his son Noah would provide him with the ability to take a rest from his heavy labor. The root of the word Noah is the Hebrew word rest. Sforno understood Lemach's naming of Noah as a prayer to God, not a look to techno technological advancement. Prayer is a challenge for many in today's wor world of instant gratification and short attention spans. Prayer requires understanding, focus, and concentration. In Perkei Avos, Rabbi Shimon taught, be careful in the reciting of Shema and in prayer. When you pray, don't make your prayer a form of routine, but a plea for mercy and supplication before God. The Rabbim explained that when one views prayer as a matter of routine, they see prayer as a burden that they simply must complete and can then move on. Prayer is the service of the heart, a vodah shabalev. It is designed to be both an emotionally and intellectually transformative experience. Prayer allows a person to develop a relationship with their creator and examine their priorities. It can be one of the most meaningful experiences a person has during their day and even during their lifetimes. It is a shame when a person loses that experience by viewing prayer as routine. When we look towards technology first and not prayer to solve our problems, we lose out. When Noah was born, Rashi saw the people as looking to, te to technological advances to ease the punishment brought to Adam for disobeying God. The more logical response would be to look to God to ease the divine punishment. It's no wonder that a generation that chose technology over God ended up becoming so corrupt that God had to further punish them with the flood. It's a harsh lesson, but one that we should all take deep inside and share it with our prayer experience to enhance our prayers and look to prayer and to God more than to technology. Shabbat Shalom.